Heavenly Father, as the sun rises, ushering in a new day, I come before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you for the peaceful slumber that rejuvenated my soul, and for the opportunity to embark on a fresh journey filled with endless possibilities. The burdens of yesterday fade into the distance, replaced by the radiant dawn that kindles renewed hope within me. With an open spirit, I approach this day, ready to embrace your divine will. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. In the face of whatever you're dealing with today, God wants you to know that your help comes directly from Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're about to embark on a heartfelt prayer together, calling on God for divine protection and abundant blessings in the name of Jesus. Stay with us until the end, open your heart, and be ready to receive the uplifting power of this prayer. Grant me your infinite wisdom, Lord, as I navigate through the decisions and challenges that await me. Guide my steps with clarity, allowing me to discern your will in every action I take. Fill me with your soothing peace, calming any anxieties that may arise, and replacing them with a quiet trust in your unwavering presence. May your peace be a steadfast anchor amidst life's storms, reminding me of your unconditional love and unwavering support. Heavenly Father, surround me with your divine protection. Shield me from harm, both physical and spiritual, as I go about my day. Keep me safe from illness, accidents, and negativity. May your presence be a fortress around me, a source of comfort and security. Bless my family, Lord, Watch over them and keep them safe. Grant them strength, health, and happiness. May they be filled with your love and guided by your light. Father, help me to see the world through your eyes today. Inspire me to extend kindness and compassion to everyone I meet. May my words and actions reflect your love, bringing light to the lives of those around me. I surrender this day to you, Father. I place my hopes, dreams, and anxieties into your loving hands. Guide me with your wisdom protect me with your love, and grant me the peace to navigate whatever this day may hold. As it is written in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. To you, Father, I give all the praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. The words of Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 5 to 8, offer profound wisdom on the true essence of prayer. He cautions against being like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly, seeking attention and praise from others. Instead, he encourages us to find a private space, shut the door, and pour out our hearts to our Heavenly Father in secret. For it is in those intimate moments that our Father, who sees all will reward us. Jesus reminds us not to babble on endlessly, as the Gentiles do, thinking that their prayers will be answered merely by repeating the same words over and over. Our Father knows our needs even before we ask, for He intimately understands the depths of our hearts. Time spent alone with God in prayer and fellowship with Him is time well spent, a sacred investment in our spiritual growth. In this fast-paced world, we make time for so many things, visiting loved ones, engaging in hobbies, celebrating with friends. Yet, I urge you to make time for the Lord, for it is in these moments that you will truly come to know Him. From this day forward, let us commit to seeking solitude, shutting the door behind us, and pouring out our hearts in secret prayer. Let us search for God's face, meditate on His Word, and listen for his voice. This practice has the power to transform our families, strengthen us during life storms, protect our marriages, and heal deep-rooted pains. It can ease our minds and fill us with peace. When we look to God's word, we find his promises. Trust in me in your times of trouble and I will rescue you. Abide in me and I will restore you. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let your hope be found in God, for he says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. 
and as Psalm 50 verse 15 declares, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Beloved children of God, if we desire to see changes in our lives, if we long for the blessings of God, we must pray. Let us make a sacred commitment to seek the Lord in secret, for it is in those intimate moments that we will find Him, and He will answer. Jesus reigns over us, and prayer is our lifeline to His power. We need to pray if we want to have victory in the spiritual realm, for prayer changes things because God acts in response to our petitions. Prayer binds us with God to the point where He gives us His power to do all things through us. That's why Philippians 4 verse 13 declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With this understanding, let us pray. King Jesus, we come and bow before you. May your name be lifted high. We come asking today for a heart of prayer, a heart that seeks to worship you, a heart that desires to praise you. Holy Spirit, teach us how to pray with power, with boldness, without ceasing. Teach us how to pray from Scripture. Help us to live and move with the awareness of God's presence. Your word says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. So in our times of suffering, help us to pray. When we need help, we will call on the name of Jesus Christ to be our stronghold in the day of trouble. We bless your name, Lord, for your word in Isaiah 45 verse 2 says, I will go before you and level the mountains. I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. Thank you for your promises, Lord. Go before us each and every day. Master, may the Holy Spirit help us to put you first in every area of our lives. You, King Jesus, are first in our homes, our finances, our marriages. Nothing and no one is worthy to compete for the number one spot in our hearts, for you alone sit on the throne. You alone are God over my life. Jehovah, we invite the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and lead us into all truth. It is only you, O God, who can level mountains. It's only you, Lord, who offers rest to the weary. It's only you, Lord Jesus, who can give us true peace. God, I pray that you might have mercy on us. Look upon us mercifully, even when we fall. Father, help us in our individual prayer lives to value and have a sacred commitment to spending time alone with you. Birth a desire in us so that we can spend time regularly in your presence and develop a stronger relationship with you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me make prayer and reading God's word a priority in my life, even amidst this busy world. Keep my priorities aligned with the kingdom of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit would keep our lives from controlling us, from distracting us and taking us away from the presence of God. Lord, help us to keep our relationship with you a priority. May the Holy Spirit never stop convicting us and pulling us in your direction. May he never stop tugging at our hearts, never stop calling us to the things of God. Help us to set our eyes and affections on heaven, to seek your presence on a daily basis. Revive our spirits, Lord, and refresh our desires so that we would chase after you. May the Holy Spirit create a fire in us that burns brightly for the things of God, a fire that seeks Jesus Christ above all else, always. Lord, may you take the number one spot in our lives and hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All glory, praise and honour can only be given to you, a righteous and merciful God. We bless your name for great and mighty are you, Lord. Amen. Many Christians in this world are distracted by the things around them, ensnared by the trappings of this temporal existence. Yet the Bible in Matthew 26 verse 41 reminds us, Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. The Word of God tells us to watch, to focus and pay attention, but it also instructs us to keep praying, to continue in prayer so that we do not lose our focus. What I urge you to do is to focus on Jesus, the Prince of Peace, rather than the dread and fear offered by the world. Focus on the Deliverer, Jesus Christ, rather than the sin, for ultimately focusing on sin will not set you free. What will set you free is focusing on Jesus. Dear friends, the Bible in Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Take a moment to truly understand these words. If we are children of God, we are instructed not to be conformed to this world. In other words, do not be like the world, be set apart. And then we are told that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Not only are we required to not conform to this world, but there must be a transformation that takes place in our minds. But let us focus on the next part of this verse. By testing you may discern what is the will of God. People of God, let me ask you, how do you discern the will of God? Where do you even begin? It is all well and good that we pray and say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done in my life. But what is God's will for our lives? To answer this question, we must understand that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be obedient to the will of God, and the will of God can be found in the word of God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if God is his word, then surely his will can be found in this book we call the Bible. This means God's will can be found in Acts 16 verse 31, where the Bible reads, So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. God's will can be found in Romans 10 verse 9, where the Bible says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God's will is that we should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds. God's will is that we should abstain from sexual immorality, lean not on our own understanding, and have no other gods. All throughout the Bible, God's will is revealed. We need not go up to a mountain or offer sacrifices to know what God wants in our lives, for it is right there in the Bible. God's will is that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. His will is that we should seek first the kingdom of God. Saints, if we are to see heaven, then we need to follow God's will, and His will is in His word. With this at the forefront of our minds, let us approach the throne of God together and ask Him to help us have a desire to read His word, to understand His word, to live out His word, because His word is His will. Dear Lord, we pray that you would help us to live lives that please you as you continue to reveal your will to us through your word. We pray that you would give us the grace to be obedient to your will. Father, forgive us for our sins, whether in thought or deed. Forgive us, Lord, if we have been living for self rather than living for you. Forgive us for all the times that we prioritized personal gain and selfish ambitions instead of doing things for your glory and honor. Lord Jesus, our prayer today is that you would help us to remain obedient to your word and to your will, so that we would never be among those who say, Lord, Lord. But your response is, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Father, we do not want that to be us. Save us, Lord, for we desire to have a real personal relationship with you. Help us not to be caught up in what we look like or what we have, but instead, may we be focused on your word, focused on your will, and on truly living for you. Lord, we pray that we would be a people who speak the name of Jesus Christ boldly, and we are able to speak it boldly because we have a close relationship with you. When we praise you, Lord, and when we worship, may it come from a deep place within our hearts, and may it be genuine and heartfelt connecting with you. Father, may we be so entrenched in your word that our lives will become living testimonies. Help us to speak the gospel with conviction whenever we are given the opportunity. May we live in obedience to your ways, Lord, and forsake the ways of our flesh. Your word in 1 John 2 verse 17 declares, The world is passing away, and with it its lust, the shameful pursuits, and ungodly longings. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purpose lives forever. Help us, King Jesus, so that we would not pursue the lust of the world, keep our desires away from shameful pursuits, keep us away from the ungodly things of this world. In the name of Jesus, we pray that our minds would always be focused on heavenly things rather than anything here on this earth. Your word in 1 Peter 2 verse 15 to 17 states, 
It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the King. We pray that the way we live our lives would be honorable before you, Lord. May we be people of integrity. You have given us free will, conscience, and the freedom to choose how we live our lives. We pray that we would never take this freedom and willingly choose evil. By your grace, Father, may we live lives of purpose, lives led by the fear of God, lives led by faith. Father, right now we say, be praised and magnified, for you deserve all glory and honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. How many of us depend on the Lord in the same way that a child depends on a parent? Childlike faith looks to the Lord for everything. Strength, provision, protection. I believe that having childlike faith is essential because when you emulate the faith of a child, you are emulating the kind of faith described in Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6, where the Bible reads, Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways know and acknowledge and recognize Him, and He will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. I pray that we may all have unshakable faith. I pray that we might be secured and anchored in Jesus Christ. As you listen, may you receive these words and be charged up in your faith. Stand your ground and trust in the Lord. The Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So even if all the odds are against you, continue to trust in the Lord and he will raise up a standard against the enemy. People of God, do not be defeated in your heart. Do not feel defeated in your mind. No matter what you face, be anchored and fixed on Jesus. The trial you face may not look like Paul and Silas in prison. It may not be a den of hungry lions, but your situation might seem just as hopeless and just as intimidating. However, when you are in the thick of it, when you have nowhere else to go, do not allow yourself to be moved. Be unshakable in your faith. Be unshakable because you have God's promises to fall back on, be unshakable because you have the Holy Spirit who will be your strength and your helper. Jesus Christ is the only sure foundation in this cold, ever-changing world. He is our steadfast anchor. Circumstances change, people change, social norms and public perceptions change, but the Word of God remains true forever. So be unshakable, saints, be unshakable. Now let us pray, dear King Jesus, give us faith like that of children, the kind of faith where we totally trust in you. I pray, Lord, that in those moments when we are weak, strengthen our faith, reinforce our faith. Help us, Holy Spirit, so that we would not harden our hearts, but instead, help us to believe. Help us to believe with courage and conviction. Help us to believe fully and without reservation in all the promises of God. Help us to fearlessly believe. Exodus 14 verse 14 declares, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Help us to boldly embrace your word with no doubt. Help us to declare and hold on to Isaiah 40 verse 29 to 31. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You, Lord Jesus, are our source of strength, and you will lead us to walk in victory. In your word, in Matthew 24, verse 35, you say, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I believe this is why I stand confidently in you. That's why I can cling to you. If ever I feel overwhelmed by the busyness and chaos of life, I pray that you will rescue me and place me in your arms. May you keep my feet from being swept away and place me on solid ground. Lord Jesus, I pray for unshakable faith. I want to be so sure of you that all doubts will be destroyed. I want to be so persuaded about you, so convinced about you, Jesus, that if the spirit of fear ever tries to attack me, it will be ineffective and useless. You have given me a spirit of power, love, 
and a sound mind. Let me be firm in my stance, Lord, so that when trouble comes our way, I won't panic, I won't lose hope, I won't be swept away by the tide of fear because I am anchored in Jesus Christ, the one who is my shield and defence, the one whose word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Do not let me stumble, O Lord. Overthrow the plans and the plots of my enemies. Help me to overcome in the name of Jesus. Fight my battles, Lord, as you have promised in your word. I pray that we are going to stand still. I will stand and hold my peace as I see the hand of God move in my life. For because of you, I will stand and testify and say, had it not been for the Lord, we would have been consumed. Had it not been for his goodness, his faithfulness and mercy, we would have been destroyed. But you have never lost a battle, King Jesus. So I come to you seeking refuge and protection. Encompass me and my family, Lord. Build a great wall of fire to protect me. Surround me and my family with your presence and grace. Steady my emotions, Father. When I am anxious, give me peace. When I am troubled, I give you my burdens. When I am worried, I cast my burdens on you. You are the rock of all ages, my strong tower and fortress. I thank you for your protection today. I come to you in recognition of your great might and power. I worship your holy name, Lord. I adore you, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life, my children and my loved ones into your caring hands. You are a God full of compassion. You deserve all the glory, you deserve all the praise. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, if you're feeling worn down from all the negative words people have spoken against you over the years, I want you to know that you are loved, you are valued, you are treasured in the eyes of God. Now, I'd like to address something that many people silently struggle with, the wounds inflicted by other people's words. Some of you have had people speak and wish negative things over your life. Some have had people speak down on you with no respect or consideration for your feelings or how their words would impact you. Some of you may have even had people speak evil over you. If this is you, if you have been on the receiving end of ill-spoken, hurtful and evil words, I want you to know that, at the end of the day when all is said and done, what will stand to be true is the Word of God. What will stand to be correct is the Word of God. What stands to be undeniable is the Word of the Lord. Isaiah 40 verse 8 said, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but what stands forever is the Word of God. Dear listener, if anyone has ever cursed you, spoken evil upon you, or said things aimed to hurt and discourage you, I want you to know that God's Word has the final say over your life, not people. God's Word is what will last, not people. Hear me when I say this. God's Word has ultimate power and ultimate authority to overcome and dismiss every evil and negative word spoken to you. So I want you to rewire your mind through God's Word. Begin to find out what the Lord says about you in the Bible, for as you search for your identity in Christ, you will find that the Word of God says you are a friend of Christ. Just read John 15 verse 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. For everyone who has ever called you weak, I want you to know that the Word of God in Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For everyone who has ever said that you will never accomplish anything, the Word of God declares in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I want you to know that God's Word in Romans 8 verse 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For everyone who has ever spoken negatively to you, I want you to know that God's word in Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we open our hearts and invite you to come and heal us emotionally where our hearts have been broken. Heal us, Lord, where our minds have been scarred. Father, wherever we have been hurt or wounded by the words of others, let your healing power flow over us. Your word in Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. There is nothing you cannot do, Lord Jesus. There's no pit so deep that you can't lift us out of and dust us off. There's nothing so dark that your light can't shine into. 
Father, I pray for every soul under the sound of my voice. May you heal them from the wounds of any hurtful words spoken against them, any painful words spoken to them, and any negative words spoken about them. Heal every listener, King Jesus, so that we may no longer walk around carrying the weight of hurtful and evil words spoken against us. In you, King Jesus, we can live free from the feelings of guilt and shame from the enemy. We are free from condemnation in you, Lord. In you, Lord, we see ourselves living free from confusion, anger and bitterness, but instead we live in peace with boldness and self-control because our identity is found in you, King Jesus. Your word tells me that I am the light of the world, and a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Your word in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Thank you, Lord, for your word that reminds us that we are precious in your sight. In you, Lord, we are healed and restored, we are loved and redeemed. In you, King Jesus, every evil word spoken against us has no power over us. Every evil hex or spell is rendered powerless in Jesus' name. It's in you that we have redemption through your blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of your grace. Father, I pray that our identity may only be found in you and in your word. Make us empty vessels that the Holy Spirit will pour into. Dear Lord, I pray that there would be total and complete healing in our lives from any negative words that cause pain. I pray for complete emotional healing for all who are listening. Help us, Lord, so that we can live according to Ephesians 3, 17, 19, which says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Gracious and loving God, we humbly come before you once more, seeking your divine presence and guidance in our lives. You are the source of all goodness and grace, and we are in awe of your unending love and mercy. We thank you for the gift of this day and for the opportunities it brings to grow closer to you and to serve others. Lord, we ask for your continued blessings upon us. Grant us wisdom and discernment in all our decisions that we may walk the path you have set before us with confidence and faith. Help us to see your hand at work in our lives, even in the midst of challenges and uncertainties. Strengthen our trust in your perfect plan and timing. We lift up to you our families, friends, and all those we hold dear. Surround them with your protection and love. Provide for their needs, heal their wounds, and fill their hearts with peace and joy. May our relationships be a reflection of your love, characterized by kindness, understanding, and mutual support. Father, we pray for those who are struggling, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Be their comfort and refuge in times of trouble. Bring healing to the sick, solace to the grieving, and hope to the despairing. Let them feel your presence and know that they are not alone. Almighty and everlasting God, we come before you once more, humbled by your greatness and awed by your infinite love. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the sustainer of all life. We thank you for your faithfulness, for your mercies that are new every morning, and for the grace that covers our lives. Lord, as we gather in prayer, we ask for your continued guidance and protection. In a world that often feels chaotic and uncertain, be our anchor and our rock. Grant us the courage to face each day with hope and determination, knowing that you are with us in every moment. Illuminate our paths with your light and direct our steps according to your will. We pray for our personal growth and spiritual development. Help us to deepen our relationship with you, to seek you earnestly, and to listen for your voice in the quiet moments. Mold our hearts to be more like yours, filled with compassion, kindness, and humility. May our lives be a reflection of your love and grace, shining brightly for all to see. 
Father, we lift up to you the concerns of our hearts. You know our deepest needs and desires, our fears and anxieties. We place them in your hands, trusting in your perfect wisdom and timing. Comfort those who are burdened, provide for those in need, and bring peace to those who are troubled. Remind us that in you, we find our true refuge and strength. We pray for the church, your body on earth. Unite us in purpose and mission that we may effectively spread your gospel and demonstrate your love to the world. Empower our leaders with wisdom and integrity and inspire each of us to serve with joy and dedication. Let our collective efforts bring healing, hope and transformation to our communities. Lord, as we navigate the challenges of daily life, help us to be mindful of your presence and your call. May we be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Grant us the grace to forgive others as you have forgiven us, and to extend mercy and compassion to those around us. In all that we do, may we seek to glorify your name. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, equipping us to be your ambassadors of love and peace. Let our lives be a testament to your goodness, and may we bring honour and praise to you in all circumstances. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives by comment using the word Amen. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. See you at next video.